As you can see, the weather today has been, to say the least, a little bit unsettled. Welcome to a wet and windy England. A do 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 do. I'm singing and speaking English in the rain. Yes, here we go again. Oh my goodness, it's Friday already. Hasn't this week gone fast? Has it gone fast for you? It has for me. It's gone by so quickly. So here we go. It is definitely Friday. The weekend is just around the corner. I'm sure you are more than relieved to hear that. So here we go. It is myself, Mr. Duncan. That's my name. And my game is all about teaching English. I have been doing this for over 10 years and here I am now into my 11th year on YouTube. Many people don't believe me. They say, yeah, Mr. Duncan, we think you're lying. We don't think you've been on YouTube for 11 years. I have, honestly honestly it's true well we have had a terrible morning here this this is the view that greeted me this morning when i woke up look at that so there it is the view this morning from my bedroom window oh my goodness it was a really horrible morning very wet quite windy the rain was pouring the rain was falling fast so there it is the view this morning from my window and it looked as if the weather was going to be very terrible today I wasn't really sure what to do because if you are a regular viewer you will know that I always like to go outside during my live broadcasts so I wasn't really sure what to do today. I wasn't sure whether or not to go outside. So that was the view this morning. Let's have a look again. So that is what I woke up to this morning. I looked out my window and the rain was pouring. However, the weather now looks like this. So this is the live view of my garden. So this is actually a view of the garden as it looks right now and as you can see the rain has stopped so the rain has eased off thank goodness so a little bit later on i will be going outside to give you some flash words and some flash phrases as well so all of that to come a little bit later on thank goodness the rain stopped because it really did look as if the rain was was in for the day but fortunately it has now eased off so what a week it has been i was of course here on tuesday did you see me on tuesday there i am doing my live stream on tuesday and it was a rather busy episode wasn't it it was a rather busy live stream on tuesday to say the least not least of all because during the live stream i did swear quite a few times i used some very colorful language let's just call it that shall we because i was talking about swearing i was asking you whether you tend to swear so there it is a still a still picture from Tuesday's live stream and you can see there my swear jar that is the thing that I use every time I use a naughty word every time I swear I have to put some money in that swear jar so I I'm going to ask you today have you got a swear jar have you got one now just like me <laughs> and perhaps we can continue the theme today but maybe we could continue the conversation and, and, and maybe you weren't here 
on Tuesday to join me so perhaps today we could also ask the question do you ever swear I do sometimes I do sometimes use bad language especially on Tuesday <laughs> I did use quite a few colorful words swear words we can also use expletives so a swear word can be described as an expletive so there it was tuesday's live stream this week i have started a new health fad now apparently i have heard that garlic is very good for you so this week i i bought some fresh garlic there it is can you see it now this particular garlic has been pickled and preserved so that is my latest health fad my current food fad of course a fad is a fashion that comes and quite often goes very quickly so that is my current food fad do you like garlic do you like eating garlic now i must admit when i was in china i used to live in china and i ate garlic all the time because the chinese are crazy about garlic they love putting garlic in lots of different dishes so i did get quite a taste for garlic whilst living in china so this week i've started eating garlic so fresh garlic what about you do you like garlic now a lot of people don't like it they don't like the taste and they also don't like the the smell on your breath so if someone has been eating garlic and then they breathe all over you the smell can be a little repugnant or repulsive so some people don't like garlic they dislike it very much what about you do you like garlic the french enjoy eating garlic very much so that is another question to ask you a little bit later on we will of course be opening the live chat it is not open at the moment but in around about 20 minutes i will open the live chat for you to type your messages to me so that is live at 2 30 with the live chat i will open the live chat at half past two and then you will have a chance to type your messages to me don't forget once i've opened the live chat you will have to refresh your screen so you will have to refresh the screen you are watching now so that is after half past two don't forget we are live at the moment it is now 10 past two on a friday afternoon here in the uk for those who don't believe that this is live it is definitely live there is no doubt about it so there is the view outside at the moment it is a beautiful still day although earlier it wasn't it wasn't earlier the weather was terrible we had lots of rain earlier so there is the view from this morning fortunately the rain has now eased off so that is the view outside right now also a few other things to catch up on oh hello we have a complaint <gasps> now i don't often get complaints but i received a complaint this year uh, this week rather <laughs> although it was this year as well this week i received a complaint from kadhar potter who says mr duncan i'm sorry to tell you that i don't like the new shape of your video i think it's a bit annoying to watch two hours in a row it was better when it was short now oh, you don't have to watch the whole two hours in one go so you don't have to watch everything as it happens 
first of all you have a choice of whether to whether or not to join me on the live chat so if you are here at the moment that means that you are watching the live chat now you don't have to stay for the whole two hours and of course you do have the chance to watch it again later when you feel free to do so so you can watch 10 minutes and then maybe 20 minutes and then maybe half an hour so you don't have to watch the whole two hours in one go there is no law that says here you have to watch all of mr duncan's live stream in one go you don't have to so you have a choice you don't have to watch the whole two hours you don't have to sit still with your hands on your head don't worry i'm not forcing you to do it <laughs> so you can watch a little bit if you miss some of the live stream don't worry about it you can always catch up with it later so of course the live stream is available later to watch as well so i hope i've cleared that up not everyone likes my live streams but quite a few people have said mr duncan we love the idea of having a live stream we love the fact that we can join you and talk to you live we can actually type our messages to you live on the internet so many people have said that they enjoy it they actually like watching the live streams during april i was with you twice a week so don't forget during april i was with you on tuesday and friday so it was a very very busy month for me so just in case you did catch the live streams don't forget you don't have to watch them all in one go you don't have to honestly so if you only want to watch 20 minutes or maybe 30 minutes or only five minutes it's up to you don't forget also later on you can watch this live stream with subtitles now because it's live we can't have subtitles on the screen during a live broadcast but later on i will process the subtitles and they will appear on the screen down there later on okay i hope i have cleared that up now thank you very much kadar potter for your message tomorrow or should i say this weekend is a special weekend because it's my mum's birthday this weekend happy birthday to mr duncan's mother that's my mum that is <laughs> so my mother is celebrating her birthday this weekend i'm not sure if she's watching at the moment but perhaps later on you can send my mother your birthday greetings because it is my mother's birthday this weekend and there you can see my mother standing in my garden so there is my mum looking great don't you think and a lot of people say that we look very similar to each other we look very very alike i don't know what you think what do you think do you think we look alike so there there is me and there is my mother so what do you think do we look alike do we look like each other yes i think there is a resemblance i think so so my mother and <laughs> me i'm trying to match my face up you see so it matches my mother anyway it's my mum's birthday this weekend <laughs> so if you want to send my mother a birthday greeting a little bit later on you are more than welcome to do so please feel free we are going to have a look at some excerpts from my english lessons we are going to look at some excerpts from my full english lessons and also a lesson that i did all about spring nature in particular i was talking all about the golden rapeseed and also the wild garlic so that coming up later on <laughs> yes more garlic 
because this week I started eating raw garlic just to see if it makes any difference to my health who knows but apparently garlic is supposed to be good for you so we have lots of things coming including excerpts as I said from my full English lessons in fact shall we have an excerpt right now okay here's an interesting question how do you know if you are mad how can you tell that you are insane well apparently if you can ask yourself the question then there is a good chance that you are not crazy at all we often use the words crazy mad and insane to express disbelief at someone's behavior without actually suggesting that the person being spoken to is really losing their marbles you paid 200 pounds for a star wars toy are you mad you walked five miles in the rain to get a hamburger that's insane strangely enough we can also use mad or crazy when talking about something exciting or thrilling we had a crazy time at the party these low prices are mad they have some crazy rides at that theme park i'm crazy for you of course crazy and mad can also be used to express anger to go crazy or mad is to lose your temper in an explosive way of course mental illness is not a laughing matter however we do have many english words including many slang terms for appearing crazy in the head such as balmy bonkers cuckoo insane loopy lunatic nuts nutty nutty is a fruit cake nut job off her rocker off his rocker off your rocker round the bend round the twist to lose your marbles you don't have to be mad to work here but it helps Do you often use slang in your English? If your answer is no, then you might want to rethink what you believe slang to be. To speak informally can be described as vernacular or colloquial speech. Slang gives new definitions to existing words. Good examples of past slang include cool and wicked as a way of expressing that something is really good these days we might say that something is awesome or sick although having said that by the time this lesson has been watched a few times there will probably be another way of expressing how good or terrible something is using a negative word in a positive way is nothing new in the 1990s the word bad was used as a slang word for good slang is an ever-changing trend so who knows by 2020 we might be using great to mean awful and garbage to mean great in the world of slang anything is possible As we have already seen today, the English language can be quite confusing, especially when it comes to words that seem connected but aren't. A good example of this occurrence is the apparent similarity between the words affluence and effluence. They look similar as they only differ by one letter. The word affluence means the state of having money or more to the point having a large and considerable amount of money the state of being wealthy is affluence with affluence comes great influence so affluence is the noun and affluent is the adjective 
we can describe a place where rich people live as an affluent area. The word effluence is a noun that describes a substance which flows from something. For example, dirty, contaminated water being released from a pipe into the sea is effluence. So the substance in this case is sewage. It is worth remembering that there is also effluent, which is a mass noun that precisely describes liquid waste and stinky raw sewage. <coughs> So there it was, another excerpt from my full English lessons. Don't forget, on my YouTube channel, there are 25, 25 full English lessons on my YouTube channel. I am often asked, Mr. Duncan, will you make some more full English lessons? And the answer to that is yes, hopefully later in the year there will be some new full English English lessons but they are still available all the ones I've made already as well as many many other English lessons as well are all available on my YouTube channel here is the address of my YouTube account my YouTube channel is right there and there are over 500 yes 500 count them all videos on my youtube channel there are videos galore so there is the address there is no excuse now for not knowing what the address is there are over 500 english video lessons lots of things made by me over the past 10 years i've been here it was way back in 2006 when i started making my youtube lessons such a long time ago so today we have lots of things coming up besides your comments on the live chat. We also have a little contest, a little competition, a little quiz to pick your brains with. So today we have our mystery picture idioms. So these are pictures of well-known English phrases. What you have to do is guess what the phrases are. Are you ready for them? Because we will be going live on the live chat in around about five minutes from now. So here they are today's mystery phrases. What are they? Here is the first one. There is the first mystery phrase. It is a well-known English phrase, but what is it? So there is the first one just say what you see and here is the second one <laughs> i'm not sure what's going on there <laughs> so this this is a well-known expression in english <laughs> i don't know why this makes me laugh so much it just looks so strange and surreal straight from the brain of Mr. Duncan. <laughs> and there is the first one. So these are well-known expressions in English, but what are they? And here is the other one. <laughs> oh, dear me. And the first one again. So what are they? Created from the strange mind of me so they are today's mystery idioms we will also be looking at some bits of nature later on because of course as you know i love nature let's have a look in my garden you can see that i love nature so much there is a pigeon just arriving did you see that the pigeon landing in my garden so this is actually a live image of my garden at the moment and there is a pigeon wandering around in my garden looking for something to eat 
yesterday by the way yesterday i saw two baby robins in the garden two not one but two young fledgling robins <gasps> And the, th the strange thing is, when you see a fledgling robin, they look nothing like robins because, of course, robins have the red breast, but the young robins don't. They don't look like their parents at all. Maybe later I can show you a photograph of a baby robin. Would you like to see that if we have time? And also, I'm going to show you something very special because of course today I will be talking a lot about nature we are going to take a look at something rather special in fact I think the thing I'm going to show you is probably the best thing I have ever filmed ever it is one of the most exciting things I have ever captured on my video camera but what is it? Find out a little bit later on. We are two minutes away from half past two. Are you ready with the live chat? Now, today on the live chat, I am going to ask you some questions, of course. When you go to a restaurant or when you go to a hotel, when you arrive at a hotel, do you ever give a tip? Do you ever offer some money for the service? For example, if you have a meal in a restaurant, you have a lovely meal and then you pay the bill and then you give some extra money as a tip. Tip. Let's write that word down because it's a very interesting word. T. I. P. Tip. So there it is. When you are in a restaurant, when you eat a meal in a restaurant after you have finished the meal, do you ever give a tip? Do you ever offer some money as a reward for the service? Also, of course, in hotels, when you first arrive at a hotel normally or quite often, <laughs> especially if you stay in a very posh hotel, Quite often there will be a porter who will carry your bags to your room and quite often it is customary to offer some money for that service. So you sometimes you will give a tip, you will offer some money. So do you ever offer tips? Do you ever give tips? Tips. A tip is something that you give for the service you have received it is paid extra so it isn't the bill it is extra extra we also call it a gratuity as well you can call it a gratuity it is a way of showing your appreciation for something that has been done for you you offer a tip as a gratuity Ooh very interesting word so here we go we are now at 2 30 it's half past two on a friday afternoon it's mr duncan live across the internet i hope you are ready with your fingers to type because i am about to open the live chat so without any further messing around let's do it shall we the live chat is now enabled we are now live we are now connected via the live chat there we go we are now up and running yes so we have mystery idioms what is this mystery idiom so there is the first one just say what you see say what you see and <laughs> i think every time i see this today i'm going to laugh because i don't know why it just makes me laugh i don't know why it makes me laugh but it, it just looks very strange <laughs> and there is the second one that is a well-known phrase a well-known phrase in english 
and there is another well-known phrase an idiom <laughs> but what are they if you think you know the answer please let me know we have lots of people wanting to say happy birthday because it's my mum's birthday this weekend happy birthday to my mother so on the live chat we have Khan Najuan who is here hello Mr Duncan I am first yes you are oh I can see some snow no there isn't any snow there isn't snow today Mr Duncan I think two hours is actually too short <laughs> well some people disagree with you and can I say happy birthday to your mother it is my mum's birthday today happy birthday to my mother because it's my mum's birthday today Antidon is here hello Antidon nice to see you today welcome quite a few regular viewers I like to see the regular viewers it means that you approve of what I do Baris is here hello Baris I don't think I've seen you here before is it your first time hello Baris Amal is here as well hello Mr Duncan it's my birthday today says Amal happy birthday to Amal oh I didn't know it was your birthday so my birth my birthday is in August because many people ask when my birthday is so my birthday is in August but it's my mum's birthday this weekend and also it is Amal's birthday Amal Rika happy birthday to you Martha is here hello Martha can I say happy birthday to your mum you certainly can you can say happy birthday to my mum it's her birthday this weekend Ricolino is here hello Ricolino I don't think I've seen you here before is it your first time if it is your first time here please let me know Eugene is here hi Eugene thank you very much for your input and also your comments and your views on my Instagram account as well thank you Eugene Julie G is here hello Julie long time no see Darko is here hello Darko and Darko wants to send a special birthday greeting to my mummy because it's my mum's birthday this weekend <laughs> but please don't ask how old she is okay because she might come round and give you a slap <laughs> I'm not joking Roma Roma is here hi Mr Duncan how are you doing congratulations to Mrs Duncan well my mother's name isn't Mrs Duncan my mother's name is Anne Anne Mr Duncan the answer to the first picture is lucky ducky <laughs> really uh, I don't think it's lucky ducky it, it looks very unlucky to me so there is the first one and there is the second one <laughs> what? <laughs> what what are these phrases do you know what they are if you think you know please let me know on the live chat hello mr duncan and happy birthday to your beautiful mother thank you very much for that Mika Ode is here hello Mr Duncan and happy birthday to your lovely mother it's my mum's birthday today there she is looking lovely 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 and of course she's standing in my garden so there is the front of the house and you can see the Shropshire Hills the Shropshire landscape behind my mum Victoria is here oh Mr Duncan I adore garlic I love garlic um, and can I always pay oh I always pay 10% as a tip so that is one of the questions I'm asking today do you ever leave a tip when you 
finish your meal at a restaurant or maybe if you have had some service in a hotel do you give some extra money so it would appear that victoria adores garlic you adore it and also you pay 10 percent extra so you give the tip and the tip is 10 percent of the bill that's pretty good oh and also long years to your mother thank you very much it is my mum's birthday this weekend happy birthday to my mother <laughs> mr duncan the second idiom is rock health i've never heard of that idiom i don't think it's a real idiom let's have a look again what are these idioms there is the first one and there is <laughs> i don't know why i keep laughing every time i see this it, it just makes me laugh i don't know why it, it, it i don't know <laughs> so there they are today's mystery idioms what are they do you ever give a tip when you have a meal after you've finished your meal and you pay the bill do you also do you also give some extra money as a tip or gratuity is another word that we use so i've had some requests to see the love doves again do you remember the love doves from last week apparently they they were so beautiful and cute i've been asked to show them again so here they are here are the love doves again <laughs> i showed these last week but i've been asked if i can show the love doves again mr duncan can we see the, the love doves kissing there they are <laughs> those are the love doves <laughs> they are so in love ah oh, isn't that romantic Ooh. he wants another peck can you see He's still he's still eager for another kiss oh look at that isn't that lovely so there it was oh look there they go again oh oh isn't love wonderful sometimes not always <laughs> mr duncan i love your lessons and yes you look very much like your mother she is lovely happy birthday to mr duncan's mother for this weekend thank you marielle for that thank you very much indeed serge is here hello mr duncan and hello to everybody no problem let's have a flash word shall we okay then i'm going to go outside and we will we will have a look at a flash word first of all i need to turn the sound up <laughs> so you can hear me and now let's go outside we are now going to have a flash word For those who are unfamiliar with my lessons perhaps you don't realize that during my live streams i like to go outside for a little bit of exercise i like to take a stretch i also like to have a little walk around as well can you see the bird bath over there that is where the birds take their baths and now and again they also have a little drink as well so here we go today's flash word and there it is today's flash word is hassle hassle the word hassle is an english verb and noun the word hassle is an english word that as a verb means to bother someone 
in an annoying way. To hassle a person is to give someone trouble by constantly bothering or pestering them. He came round yesterday to hassle me over the outstanding debt. My neighbours keep hassling me about my barking dog. To hassle someone as a verb is to annoy, pester, irritate, bother, harass. As a noun, the word hassle names something that is bothersome, irritating or annoying to deal with. Getting a new passport these days is such a hassle. I hate the hassle of having to enter passwords all the time. Oh yes, I hate passwords as well. I really hate entering passwords. They are such a hassle. The word hassle derives from the 19th century local dialect for hack or sorat, although the actual origin is unknown. You can also be hassled by someone and something can be a hassle. So there it is. It can be used as a verb and also as a noun. So there is today's first flash word. Hassle. If something hassles you, it gives you trouble. It bothers you or it is something that is difficult to do. I'm back I'm back inside even though the rain has stopped it is still very very cold out there very cold indeed Mr. Duncan, your mother, your mother is so beautiful for her age. Thank you, Connor Dewan. It is my mum's birthday this weekend. So I'm giving my mum plenty of mentions today because it is her birthday this weekend. And you are welcome to send my mother a birthday greeting if you wish. Also, do you ever give money as a tip after you have received service, for example, in a restaurant or at a hotel. Another thing I'm going to mention today, I wasn't going to mention this, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Here is an interesting word, slogans. The word slogan. Can you see it? Slogan. Now, the word slogan means a phrase that is very well known normally used in politics or in advertising so there is an interesting word slogan do you know any slogans do you know any well-known slogans so a slogan is a phrase that becomes very well known almost like a catchphrase you could say so for example Many years ago here in the UK, the the production of eggs. <laughs> Honestly, I am going to talk all about eggs now. The production of eggs increased to such a point where the supply outnumbered the demand. So there were too many eggs. So what they tried to do, they tried to encourage people to eat more eggs and as a way of promoting the action of eating eggs, they came up with an amazing slogan. And the slogan was, go to work on an egg. And that was it. That was the slogan. So that was used as a way of encouraging, encouraging people to buy and use eggs, to buy eggs and eat eggs. Go to work on an egg. So that is, a slogan that was created many many years ago and used in fact sometimes people use it now 
so do you know any slogans any well-known slogans they are normally used in advertising or in politics as well a good example of course is donald trump make america great again that is a slogan it's a slogan right let's go back to the live chat mr duncan this is mohammed from algeria please can you tell me how the british native language pronounces big numbers like 105 1543 i think that's that's kind of answered the question really so 105 or 105 or you can say 1543 so those are the two numbers that you've given me there so i hope that helps esonal esonal says mr duncan it's syad from london watching you now in bond street in debenhams <laughs> a very big hello to mr duncan and all your students around the world happy birthday to your mother yes my mother's birthday is this weekend there she is oh it's my mum <laughs> ah okay now antidon has given a very interesting guess for one of the mystery idioms very interesting there they are today's mystery idioms what are they there is the first one and there is the second one thank you antidon for your guess mr duncan the other idiom yes matthew is also guessed the idiom as well ernesto is here hello ernesto hello mr duncan i've been following you for many years i have been following your lessons for many years your lessons are very useful to me because i have my son who is studying in the usa thank you very much and have you ever been to italy i've never been to italy ever a lot of people can't believe it but i've never ever been to italy eugene is the first idiom wishing to break a leg let's have a look wishing to break a leg no it isn't it is not just say what you see today mr duncan it's very cloudy here in algeria but it seems like there's no rain i myself love the rain so i envy you because you were able to see the rain whilst i couldn't but are you a fan of rain i don't like rain at all i hate the rain i hate walking in the rain and i really hate getting wet on a rainy day so the weather this morning was awful <laughs> this is this is the view from my window this morning so this is what i woke up to this morning this is the actual view <laughs> it was pouring with rain so that was the view this morning fortunately the weather cleared up and now it is well at least it's not raining it's still cloudy there's no sunshine i'm afraid but at least it is not raining <clears throat> mr duncan here is an example for the stone idiom <laughs> yes i like that one very good very good matthew mr duncan this weekend yes this weekend is my mother's birthday not today not today mr duncan i have a slogan i'm loving it that is a slogan yes it is i think it's a slogan for mcdonald's is that right i'm loving it i'm loving it <laughs> are you loving this i hope so <laughs> hassan oh hassan is going oh bye-bye hassan that was a very quick stop 
that was a very short visit mr duncan lots of greetings to your mum thank you ernesto for that eva says mr duncan your mother looks very lovely and fashionable i also love clothes with the spotted pattern we wish a long life for your mother with lots of joy thank you very much and it is my mum's birthday this weekend there she is my mother will be another year older as we all will this year <laughs> i have a nice slogan mr duncan oh i see the world of english is a fun and exciting place to be i'm so glad you could join me for another lesson that's my slogan that's my own slogan for my english lessons thank you very much thank you matthew for your guess on the mystery idiom jamila is here hello jamila many happy returns to your mother mr duncan and by the way i love garlic do you jamila me too i have gone absolutely crazy this week over garlic i absolutely love it although i've always loved it i've always loved, loved it all my life but this week i have been eating lots and lots of pickled garlic very very delicious it's my mummy again hello mummy hello <laughs> mr duncan i like your tie says pedro belmont thank you very much pedro for that i like your tie you have very good taste yes i think this this tie is very stylish don't you think especially if i wear it over my shoulder like this watch watch this there we go look at that oh yes very sophisticated mr duncan are there any differences between the words panic and worry well panic is normally something that happens when you get incredibly afraid or upset or worried so panic is extreme worry so worry is just being concerned about something you are worried about it but panic that's panic so worry is hmm oh panic is <laughs> i hope that explains it mr duncan can i send a big gift to your mother that would be a, a, a bouquet of roses and also her son who has good conduct as a teacher thank you frank for that mustafa is here mustafa thank you very much for joining me today and satarino actually quite a few messages coming through now very busy here and already we are coming up to th five to three already the first hour has gone by so quickly so let's have a look at some nature shall we here is a lesson that i made in fact this is not just one lesson this is three lessons edited together and these lessons featured some very beautiful things which i will explain in the video field you can see behind me is full of rapeseed. It is a type of plant used for the production of certain types of oil. 
the oil produced can be used for cooking and as a type of fuel the oil is obtained from the rape seeds themselves the plants you can see here are not ready for harvesting as the seeds have not yet formed rapeseed oil is now widely produced in the world countries with the most production include Canada and China the production of rapeseed oil here in the UK has increased steadily over the past 10 years or so it really is a beautiful sight and it is hard to escape the feeling that summer is on its way This particular type of gate is called a kissing gate because the gate touches both sides. It kisses. Also, when you're in here, if you have your lover with you, you can have a nice romantic kiss together. If you are a fan of garlic, then you are going to love this place. This particular type of garlic plant is known as the broad-leaved garlic or wood garlic. It is related to the chive and has the Latin name Allium orsinum, which is a reference to brown bears who apparently have a keen taste for it. Wild garlic is also eaten by humans. The leaves taste great in soup and can be used to garnish salads. The scent of this plant is very strong and there can be no mistaking when you are near an area where they are growing. Here you can see thousands of wild garlic plants. Later they will come into bloom with brilliant white flowers. Their leaves are similar to those found on Lily of the Valley. The difference being that you cannot eat those leaves. Lily of the Valley leaves are highly poisonous and eating them could prove fatal. Here is a great place to give those five senses a good workout. Surrounded by beautiful flowering wild garlic. What a beautiful sight. The air around me, full of the aroma of the forest's pollinating plant life. What a glorious smell. 
the various species of birds singing in the trees above me. What a wonderful sound. The garlic leaves with their strong flavor. What an incredible taste. The rugged surface of the living, oxygen-giving tree. I can reach out my hand and literally touch nature. Our senses help us to not only perceive the world around us, but more importantly, they allow us to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there it was. Did you enjoy that? Some picturesque nature there with the rapeseed and also the wild garlic. Right now, near where I live, there is wild garlic everywhere. Although it's very early in the season, so it hasn't come into bloom yet. But you can actually pick the leaves from the wild garlic near my house and you can cut it up and you can put it in soup or you can put it on salad as garnish so my my current fad of course is to eat the bulb of the garlic and there it is <laughs> but also you can eat certain varieties of garlic you can also eat the leaves as well thanks a lot for your messages for my mum it is my mother's birthday this weekend hello mr duncan from reginaldo hello reginaldo greetings mr duncan from brazil give your mother my best wishes for her birthday i'm reginaldo from brazil it's my first time here live i adore your lessons thank you very much reginaldo and i will forward your greetings to my mother no problem hello mr duncan i am from venezuela i am 24 and i am so happy to have the chance to watch your videos i am going to learn a lot that is going that is going to be a fact it is my first time here el pargito you are very welcome welcome to the live chat van sax is here hello mr duncan what do you do in your free time when i have free time which isn't very often i like to go on long walks as you saw in the video <laughs> so in the video you just watched you saw me walking all around the place so i do love taking long walks and i love bird watching i'm very keen on nature I have lots of interests and of course I spend a lot of my time doing this here I am now doing this just for you don't forget everything I do is done for free this is free it costs nothing at all and also my English lessons on my YouTube channel they are all free of charge there are over 500 videos on my YouTube channel yes 500 <laughs> If you started watching my videos today and you watched one every day, you would still be watching them this time next year. That's how many there are. There are lots. By the way, if you wish to make a small donation, if you may wish to make a donation on the Super Chat, the Super Chat button is on the screen. I know it doesn't work for everyone, but for those it does work for if you wish to make a donation you are more than welcome to do so and of course you can make a regular donation to my patreon account as well just down there because everything i do all of this i give away for free i'm giving you my time right now and it will cost you nothing nothing at all lucas says mr duncan is the first idiom break your duck now that is very interesting because there is there is an expression in english that says break a duck or break your duck and that means to to score your first point or to score your first try 
at something so to do something for the first time we can say that you have broken your duck so well done yes that is that could relate to this picture but it isn't the one i'm looking for i'm looking for another one but what is it <laughs> mr duncan today was not good for me says ta min ha why not what happened have you been working hard today emerson says mr duncan can you give me some tips on how to raise a bilingual child and how to teach babies how to speak english now i i'm almost afraid to answer this because sometimes i'm not sure if people are just making fun of me or having a joke so yes if you are raising a small child now here is a theory now this is not necessarily what i think but there is a theory that if you stimulate a child's brain when they are very young with information you can actually teach them over time so before they are able to speak or, or even walk you can actually teach a young child now that is what is believed because young people young human beings when they are learning how to survive they have to learn the information very quickly so young people tend to have very sponge-like brains they can absorb information very quickly so i think there are many ways of probably allowing a child to be exposed to different languages by maybe getting them to listen to things maybe listening to things in english but i'm not sure if nine months old you will get much of a response to be honest i don't think you're going to be having conversations in any language with a nine month old baby to be honest i think it'll be it'll be lots of hello mr duncan nice to see you again says abdul hi abdul nice to see you and welcome Khan the Duan has has sent my mum a cake actually he's sent one two three four five six seven eight, nine, ten cakes i hope that's not a cake for every 10 years i hope not it's my mum's birthday this weekend hello please answer my word whoever i don't know what that means hello please answer my word whoever you mean me <laughs> i don't know i'm not sure what you mean by that i'm very confused mr duncan may is coming and the tuesday lessons are ending yes there will be no more live english lessons on tuesday that was just for april mr duncan how was your childhood can you speak a little a little bit for us do you mean about about my childhood are you really interested in my childhood do you really want to know about me because i'm sure a lot of people will find that very boring if i started talking about me and my childhood it sounds very self-centered <laughs> but i was a very a shy boy many people don't believe this but i was a very shy child very quiet quite introvert in fact i was a very shy boy very awkward i wasn't very good at socializing when i was little very shy david is here hello david happy birthday and strong health to your mother mr duncan thank you very much david and it's nice to see you back again with me mr duncan do you know any japanese words i don't know very many japanese words although i am quite fascinated by japan as a country 
mr duncan eugene has guessed has made a guess on the pictures here they are today's picture idioms so here is a picture of what do you see just say what you see and there is the second one <laughs> which for some reason this picture keeps making me laugh and i don't know why i think it's because it looks so it looks very surreal and unusual that's my excuse anyway mr duncan happy birthday to your mum thank you pablo for that thank you very much oro puro says it is nadia hello nadia watching in algeria at the moment and you at the moment are typing your english dissertation are you not i think you are british literature oh, wow that is a very big subject so many facets so many areas to cover mr duncan i am following you while i prepare my fish for my dinner can you say what the difference is between while and during well while is as you are doing something or as you are doing one thing you are doing another so it is normally expressed as a way of showing that you are whiling you are doing something while something happens or of course we can simply say that you are whiling away the time which is a slightly different use and during very similar very similar in use in some ways so during and while can be used in very similar ways while i was walking or whilst i was walking or of course during my walk so you can use them in similar ways big happy birthday to your mother thank you pablo once again heart as a rock heart as a rock oh i see because the you think the the blood is coming from the stone oh i see what you mean there yes yes heart as a rock that isn't it but there is an expression in english which goes heart of stone a person who has a heart of stone i think we talked about that last week mr duncan can you tell us what money is used in england what money vanildo we have the pound here we use pound so that is the the large sum pounds and the small is penny so here we have the pound and the penny the pound and the penny so the pound tends to be the large amounts and the pennies are the small amounts mr duncan your t-shirt and hat is extremely similar oh you mean today yes they they almost match because my t-shirt has stripes and my hat also has stripes yes you're right mr duncan i found a slogan yes we can now if my memory serves me correct that was barack obama's slogan during his campaign eight years ago so i think so yes that that is a slogan so a slogan is a phrase often used in advertising or in politics so yes thank you jb for that mr duncan what is your afternoon hot drink there is no hot drink today you may have noticed that we are now at quarter past three and i've had no drink today but i do have some water here to soothe my throat <laughs> lad gel says mr duncan i think the duck that tries to fly ends up with a broken leg meaning 
don't try to change how things work or this will lead to unpleasant things happening thank you very much for that that's a very long phrase it isn't that though but that's I, I do like the idea though that's a very good idea I like it mr. Duncan my favorite idiom with the term stone is something written in stone I use it quite often so yes we can say thank you Matthew we can say that something is written in stone it means that it is permanent it is permanent so if you write something in, in stone, it means it is permanent. Mr. Duncan, how is your father? <laughs> do you mean how is your father or do you mean how is your father? <laughs> Which means something quite different. My dad is OK. No problems. Ariel, Mr. Duncan. Could you please welcome Tommy from Argentina, a new watcher that you have? Thank you, Ariel, and a big hello to Tommy, who is now watching in Argentina. A big hello to you. Mr. Duncan, do you like this slogan? The enemy of my enemy is my best friend. Yes, we've been hearing a lot of that at the moment. <laughs> we have been hearing a lot of people saying that so the enemy of my enemy is my friend and I'm sure you don't need me to explain what that means especially at the moment with the current situation in the world mr. Duncan the time in Algeria is the same in Algeria it is just after 17 minutes past three. Oh, I see. So the time zone where you are is the same as here. I think that's I think that's what you mean. Vanildo is here. I'm an English student, but I'm not very good in my English. I'm sorry for the wrong words in English. Vanildo, don't worry about it. We all have to learn. Learning is just a process. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Mr. Duncan, hello from Brazil, and I am living now in London. You are in London. Egan. Hello, Egan, and a big hello to you. Thanks for joining me. In my garden this week, there were, was a lot of activity. And here we go. Some activity in my garden this week. This time we have the blackbirds. And here is a male blackbird. Can you see what he's doing, though? He is actually collecting food but he's not eating the food he's actually collecting it in his beak he is taking it back to the nest to feed his chicks so if you look carefully he is picking the seed up off the floor he's picking all of the seed up and he's collecting it in his beak because at the moment in the nest there are some hungry blackbird chicks who are waiting to be fed <laughs> so this is something i captured yesterday so this is actually yesterday in my back garden and there is the blackbird you can see that he is collecting the seeds so he's not eating them he's just putting them in his beak and then he will take them back to the nest and feed them to the chicks. Isn't that nice? So another little snapshot of nature taking place in my garden. Talking of nature, I have found a photograph of a baby robin. We mentioned robins earlier and here is a photograph of a baby robin oh look at that isn't that absolutely adorable <gasps> oh my goodness so cute so there is a baby robin for those who are interested to know what a chick looks like a robin isn't that beautiful 
although he doesn't look very happy He's probably missing his mum and dad mr duncan did you prepare the pickled garlic yourself no i didn't uh, i i actually cheated i went into town and bought some from the local deli so they have it there so i bought some in fact i bought two two lots of pickled garlic that's a lot of garlic mr duncan do you know which company used the slogan think different i i want to say i think it's an electronic company i don't know why i want to say i want to say like samsung or panasonic or maybe sony i'm not quite sure but you can tell me of course think different thank you matthew for that that's a great slogan a very good slogan mr duncan yes the phrase has been guessed by eugene thank you very much for that mr duncan i thought a robin is red yes the adult the adult is red but the baby is not it looks completely different mr duncan i'm just 12 years old so when i have a wrong word please tell me thank you Khan Juin, for that mr duncan i hate garlic i hate it i don't like the taste and i don't like the way it makes your breath stink i don't like garlic not everyone likes garlic it is true oh mr duncan that robin was so cute i think so uh think different i think it was apple was it apple is it, is it their slogan now though is it is it now i think it might be although to be honest i don't own any apple products don't shout at me <laughs> Toyota, Mr. Duncan. Was it Toyota or BMW? I remember one, Vorsprung Dork Technik. Is, is, that, is that right? Have I pronounced that right? I think that was, that was the slogan of, I think it was BMW or was it Volkswagen? I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it was, I think it was German. Mr. Duncan, the robin is so cute. I know, so cute and lovely. Mr. Duncan, I am sorry to say that I made myself a cup of tea at the hour. You have me very well trained. Thank you, Antidon, for that. That's brilliant. Let's have a look at another video clip. This is taken from Full English number 18. And in this, we are going to talk about being snooty. We are also going to talk about attention span and the word hierarchy. It would appear that more and more people are unable to concentrate. Are unable to concentrate for long periods of time due to Due to them having short attention short attention spans. Do you know someone who is snooty? Have you ever met a snooty person? The word snooty means to behave with an air of superiority. To be snobbish and arrogant is to be snooty. A snooty person believes they are better than others. Their view is that they have a better lifestyle than most other people. A person with money might behave in a snooty way. 
they look down on those who have less wealth or appear to live in a lower class than them. A snooty person tends to be arrogant and stuck up. We can describe a snooty person as a snob. This person behaves in a snobbish way. They have a high and mighty attitude. They are toffee-nosed, supercilious, pompous, haughty, conceited and quite often arrogant. <coughs>time to take a look at another buzzword a buzzword is a sentence or word that is in common use during a certain time or is seen as being popular today's buzzword is attention span this phrase relates to the amount of time a person can concentrate on one thing this can relate to a task or an activity a person's attention span is measured by how long they can concentrate on doing one thing. We often talk about the short attention span of young people, the various attractions and distractions that exist nowadays has led to a belief that people are beginning to develop short attention spans. The advent of instant digital media and online streaming allows people to view many things within a short space of time. It would appear that these days people grow bored easily as more choices means that they can swap and change what they are watching in a more convenient way. The term short attention span highlights the inability to concentrate on just one thing. It would appear that more and more people are unable to concentrate for long periods of time due to having short attention spans. It is inevitable that at some point in your working life you will have to answer to someone who is above you in status or rank. Most work environments have some sort of administrative hierarchy. The word hierarchy means chain of command or pecking order. From the lowly to the high up, the positions in the workplace tend to follow a typical pattern. From the unpaid intern right up to the senior management, somewhere in that chain you will be placed. More often than not, most senior management chains consist of supervisors and managers. Then, right at the top, there is the CEO, which stands for Chief Executive Officer. There are many ways of describing this person, both formally and informally. This person is the boss, the top man or top woman the chief, the leader. Informal terms include the big man, the head honcho, the big cheese, the top brass. The boss or company owner might be described as a fat cat. This particular name is seen as being negative and derogatory as it suggests that the boss is wealthy and very powerful. The bank is owned and run by a bunch of fat cats. There it was, another full English excerpt. Don't forget, there are 25 full English lessons on my YouTube channel. 25. So those were just short excerpts not the full lessons so there are lots of other things to watch in those lessons and there are 25 in total many people ask mr duncan when will we see some more full english lessons i am hoping to make some new full english lessons later this year as soon as the weather gets better 
<laughs> because at the moment the weather is very unsettled but i'm hoping to make some more full english lessons later this year you heard it here first we are now just after half past three on a friday i hope you are looking forward to the weekend do you have something special planned this weekend anything planned for the weekend i know tomorrow i'm going into town i shall walk into town tomorrow to have my usual lunch uh, but on sunday i don't think i'm going anywhere i don't think i'm not sure yet mr duncan can you tell me what a noun phrase is thank you mustafa a noun phrase is a phrase that plays the role of a noun the head word in a noun phrase will be a noun or a pronoun so instead of just saying you like something you will use a phrase instead a phrase and that will be the noun the noun for example i like singing in the bath so that is a good example of a noun phrase or i know the back streets so instead of saying i like it or i know them you are naming it by using a phrase so i hope that helps you of course it's very complicated and very I, I probably need a whiteboard to explain all of them so, so those are just some examples of noun phrases i hope that helps you so instead of just saying you like something you can use a phrase to name the thing and to show the full meaning so that is a noun phrase i hope that helps you mr duncan think different was an advertising slogan for apple i think that was a long time ago in the past if if memory serves me correctly mr duncan i don't like garlic i don't know why so many people enjoy it in my city i love garlic i like it very much mr duncan do you give classes privately by skype no i don't the reason is because my time is very short and very valuable so if i did charge for my skype lessons and of course i would have to charge for the time it would be rather expensive but i have sometimes thought about doing it but the problem is it would be very expensive so this is something that i've explained many times in the past and i'm going to do it again the reason why i do this here for free is because i want as many people as possible to have a chance to learn english now that means people who might be unable to pay for lessons or to go to a special training center to learn english so i try to aim my lessons at everyone and that means everyone so that's the reason why my lessons have always been given away for free including my live lessons but of course if i did individual lessons one on one then i would have to charge and it wouldn't be cheap jana says hi mr duncan hi jana how are you doing nice to see you here mr duncan I don't know what the live chat is doing today it keeps going all over the place <laughs> it's it's moving on its own it keeps going up and then it goes down and then it goes up i don't know what's going on here mr duncan a snooty is a person who likes to show what he or she has yes they are very materialistic they like to show off they think they are better than other people they are very snooty mr duncan time goes by so fast april is already going what things do you have regrets about in the past thank you zoo um i don't have too many regrets fortunately i think i'm quite lucky in that respect eugene is here of course a regular viewer mr duncan uh, sony has the slogan make believe 
that's true yes i used to buy lots of sony products in fact some of my cameras are made by sony mr duncan is it right the spelling of robin with one b yes just one b in robin razan says hello mr duncan this is razan and this is my first time watching your videos it seems more than interesting oh thank you very much because i have had some complaints about my live lessons some people don't like them they say they're they are too long now don't forget you don't have to watch all of the lesson in one go you can have little breaks you can go away and then come back and watch a little bit more you can go away come back watch a little bit more so you don't have to watch the whole two hours in one go mr duncan is the second idiom you are wasting your blood on a rock uh not really no that is not correct i'm afraid saturino is here hello saturino hi there the slogan this slogan is very cool to think the worst of someone do your sin but usually you spot on I, i'm not sure i'm not i don't I, I i'm not sure if i've read that right so please excuse me mr duncan thank you all banks are are managed by a bunch of fat cats that might be true that might be true more seller is here hi mr duncan i am from columbia thank you very much okay we're going back outside for shall we have a flash phrase just for a change okay we are now going outside to have a flash phrase fortunately it's not raining So let's go outside now. Did you see the woodpecker fly by then? The woodpecker was actually on the bird feeder and just flew by. We'll be seeing more of the woodpeckers a little bit later on. Ooh. So here we go. Here is a English phrase for a Friday afternoon. Just another 20 minutes to go before I have to say goodbye for this Friday. And of course, for April because this is the last live stream in April and there it is there is today's flash phrase push the envelope push the envelope push the envelope is an English phrase the phrase push the envelope is an English phrase that means to reach the limit of something and then go beyond it to push the boundaries of what is possible or acceptable is to push the envelope we like to push the envelope with our research mr duncan likes to push the envelope with his english teaching methods <laughs> that's true some modern comedians push the envelope with their jokes to approach and extend the limits of what is possible or what is seen as acceptable is to push the envelope you push the boundaries you test the limits to suggest something that has never been tried is to push the envelope so there it is today's flash phrase push the envelope i think the woodpecker is waiting to come back
back inside I'm back everyone back in the studio I must say it's a little bit cold outside today a little chilly to say the least mr. Duncan here's another example of a noun phrase um, I've met the last remaining chef or you can say I've met him so in its basic form I've met him but to give more information you can say I've met the last remaining chef you are giving more information and that is a noun phrase a noun phrase mr. Duncan I like the term fat cat <laughs> I think a lot of people do mr. Duncan it is the first of May soon is it a bank holiday in England yes we do on Monday we have a public holiday so yes because I think the first is on Sunday so because the, the holiday falls on Sunday we actually get an extra day off so on Monday it is a public holiday mr. Duncan the live chat has gone by so fast today it's true mr. Duncan hi again buggy who is nice to watch you again and as as I'm working as I was at work and so far to catch up with your lessons thank you Mustafa for that Pedro says the next time I see my boss I will call him and say hey there fat cat come here that's a very strange way to hand in your notice mr. Duncan can you tell us what the mystery idioms are please I will very soon before I go here they are again mystery idiom <laughs> there's the first one and you just saw the second one <laughs> I don't know why this this always makes me smile when I see it I actually made this myself this actual image I constructed it myself <laughs> the things you can do with Photoshop it's amazing mr. Duncan I want to know how much I should pay as a tip if I visit another country because we don't pay we don't have tips in Japan that is something I've heard before I've heard that tipping doesn't happen in Japan um, and other countries as well it doesn't happen I, I think it's certain parts of China as well they don't tip something I found out in fact in some cases it might be seen as offensive if you try to give more money after you've paid the bill it can in some cases be seen as an insult so yes you do have to be careful so here in the UK um, I would say 10% 10% I'm sure some people are going to argue and say here yeah, mr. Duncan that's very tight you are very tight fisted 10% Ten, it should be 15 or maybe even 20 <laughs> <laughs> well I think 10% is fine that's okay isn't it that's what I normally do anyway if I leave a tip in a restaurant normally it's around about 10% I think that's fine <laughs> what do you think <laughs> mr. Duncan have you decided to change your mobile phone yet I'm interested because you asked people for their opinion I haven't changed my phone Th there it is there is my my mobile phone my smartphone I've had this for over three years this phone so really in technology years this is actually very old but I'm thinking of updating it I'm thinking of updating the phone to the new Samsung the new Samsung Galaxy 8 so I'm not sure at the moment if to or not I'm still undecided and of course today 
I think today the Samsung Galaxy S8 became available today, didn't it? I think so, if, I, if I'm correct. Mr. Duncan, I wish you all the best from Bimal, who is watching in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much. And you are very welcome here today. Mr. Duncan, I was really scolded. Scolded and told off for giving with an old woman after giving a tip says Roma Roma yes some people see if you give a tip if you offer more money after you've paid the bill some people see it as an insult Saturino says is Theresa May oh I, I couldn't possibly say that I couldn't not with an election on the way you see because we have an election now coming so I have to be very careful what I say I think behind me just to make sure that we are being fair maybe maybe next Friday I will have a picture of Jeremy Corbyn as well behind me to make it fair and maybe Nicola Sturgeon as well Nicola Sturgeon hello my name is Nicola Sturgeon I am a robot I think she's a robot do you think so she, she looks like uh, one of those replicants from Blade Runner Mr Duncan what is your hobby my hobby I have lots of hobbies walking nature bird watching eating watching television I love watching TV I watch TV sometimes not always but this week of course and for the past two weeks I've been enjoying Better Call Saul on Netflix Ooh. it's one of my favorite TV shows that is Mr Duncan I think you are a teacher at school I used to teach in many schools uh, in China when I lived in China I used to I used to run a training center I also used to be the vice dean of a school which taught business English and of course I used to go around to different parts uh, of China in the area where I lived giving talks to parents and also teachers and students as well so when I lived in China uh, they, they always kept me very busy in fact sometimes I would be at home resting and then the phone would go and I'd say hello and they would go Mr Duncan we need you a car will come and collect you in 10 minutes and then I had to get ready and go off somewhere to give to give a speech to about 600 people so that happened very often when I was working in China I would often find myself doing lots of work sometimes unexpected work Mr Duncan I am home at last says Alberto hi Alberto welcome back how was your day was it a good day I hope so I'm ready to enjoy your program Mr Duncan thank you very much I am going in 10 minutes don't forget of course on Friday I am here from 2 p.m UK time Mr Duncan I really love watching your videos on YouTube because I find them easy to follow I find it easy to follow your lessons because of the way you explain the language it is truly practical as well as attractive thank you very much for that it's very similar to the way I teach in the classroom as well I, I always remember one school that I visited in China and, and afterwards some of the teachers came to me and they said we have never seen anyone teach like that ever with their mouth open with surprise <laughs> someone is promoting their channel on my <laughs> I'm not here to give free adverts to people's websites <laughs> definitely not if you want if you want a promotion on my live chat you will have to pay for it <laughs> please 
Antidon, many of my favourite foods have minced garlic. <gasps> Grilled garlic bread. <gasps> oh. Garlic teriyaki. <gasps> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Caesar salad and escargot. Ugh. I don't like escargot because that it's snails. Ugh. I can't eat snails. I'm sorry. I draw I draw the line at eating snails. Definitely not. Hello, Mr. Duncan. It's my first time here, says Victor. Hello, Victor, and welcome and a big hello to Mexico. I know I have lots of people watching not only in Mexico, but all around the world in so many countries. People are watching my English lessons and I do appreciate it very much. Is Mexico on the list? I'm trying to see where Mexico is. Is it there? I'm sure it's there somewhere. It has to be. <laughs> yes, there it is. I can see it just under Japan and just above the United States, which is ironic. Mr. Duncan, what was the achievement that you gained whilst in China. Well, there, there are many things that I achieved. I learned a lot about life. I learned a lot about myself and I learned a lot about Chinese culture, of course. Mr. Duncan, why are you not going to stream on Facebook? Well, because I'm on YouTube streaming. There's no point. What is the point of going on Facebook? Because most of the people that follow me on Facebook also follow me on YouTube. So it only seems sensible to be broadcasting live on YouTube. I can't think of any reason why I would broadcast live on Facebook, especially at the moment, because Facebook live streaming isn't very good, to be honest. Mr. Duncan, what kind of computer do you have? I have a custom made computer with lots of high spec bits and pieces inside a very high spec graphic card nvidia oh very posh mr duncan mr duncan what is your favorite tv show as i just mentioned i mentioned better call saul which is on netflix at the moment i love that program very much of course it is the sequel to breaking bad Garlic is used in fondue. <gasps> I would very much like to try garlic fondue. I would like to dip my thing. I would like to dip my thing into some fondue. And also it makes a very fantastic soup base. Yes, it does. I think so. We will have a look at something very special before I go. Now, this is one of my all time favorite video clips that I filmed myself. And this is a very special moment of time that we are about to see. I think on my list of favorite things that I filmed, I think this must be near the top. So in a moment, I'm going to show you something really lovely. And it is what we will finish with today as well. Let's have a look at these mystery idioms, shall we? So the first one, I'm going to give you the answers now. Here come the answers to the mystery idioms. So here is the first one. Now, I said to say what you see. So say what you see. So can you see what that is? Well, first of all, it is obviously a duck. And it is a duck that is having difficulty walking because it's injured one of its legs. We could say that this is a lame duck, lame duck, something that is useless or can't be used or something that serves no purpose is a lame duck. So that is the expression I was looking for. Lame duck. The second one. 
just to show that that's what it was by the way lame duck <laughs> i forgot to show you the text there there it is lame duck and then the second one now this one quite a few people got this right actually it's very good many people got this correct and this expression is you can't get blood from a stone or we can also say it is like trying to get blood from a stone so something that is very difficult to obtain or to get something that is very hard to get or achieve maybe you are trying to borrow some money from a person who doesn't like to lend money we can say that it is like taking blood from a stone because you can't get blood from a stone so something that is unobtainable something that is hard to get something that is impossible to get we can say you can't get blood from a stone which is true so there they were today's picture idioms i hope you enjoyed them mr duncan i hope roma roma you are still here there were the answers mr duncan do you conduct this live program every friday i really love this live program says bimal bimal i am here every friday so just to remind you every friday live english from 2 p.m uk time every friday so there it is there is no excuse friday 2 p.m uk time and just in case you want my youtube channel address there it is that is where you will find me on youtube it's nearly time to go what a shame andrea says greetings from slovakia i wish your mum a happy birthday yes it's my mother's birthday this weekend happy birthday to my mum my son said you are funny he is four years old sometimes watching your videos with me he likes like him the animals which you show so your son enjoys watching the animals i think so yes nature is fascinating your garden is very beautiful thank you andrea for that live in youtube is better than any other site thank you ali for that some people don't like the live english streams i don't know why because you have the opportunity to talk live it's live this isn't recorded it's happening right now <laughs> unless of course you are watching it later in which case it isn't mr duncan are we going to see you next tuesday no you're not because i will be going back to one live stream every week so twice a week was during april and of course april is coming to an end april is going thanks it's not the last time alberto says i misunderstood your your message on facebook oh of course i think that's because on facebook i said today is the last live english what i what i meant of course because we're coming towards the end of april it is the last live english of april so sorry if you mis misunderstood that maybe it's my fault i apologize i really appreciate your live streams thank you nick for that nick bell thank you very much you are more than welcome mr duncan ali amir says mr duncan for the second time i send this message how are you long time no here the first time to be with you in the live stream hello from yemen and happy birthday to your lovely mum there she is there's my mother 
it is her birthday this weekend happy birthday to my mother <laughs> let's finish with something that never fails to amaze me every time i see this something that i absolutely adore i love filming the wildlife and now and again i get to film things that are quite special and unusual now earlier on we saw a woodpecker fly past during the live link outside well here we go with a very close look at a woodpecker so here it is this is a great spotted woodpecker it is a female and you can tell that it's a female because its head is completely black the male has a small patch of red at the back of its head so that's the way you know that that is a female so there it is a female great spotted woodpecker but wait take a look at this oh my goodness now this is incredible this might be the most amazing thing i have ever filmed this is a fledgling woodpecker so it's just left the nest and now it is exploring the garden so this is a chick woodpecker and i think this must be the most amazing thing i have ever captured on video it is so unusual and very rare and as you can see the chick is trying to take a bath but it doesn't seem very sure so there it is that is a chick great spotted woodpecker fresh from the nest and now it's going to say goodbye i hope you enjoyed that something a little unusual something rather special so there it was a baby great spotted woodpecker a fledgling no less mr duncan we are not going to see you on tuesday no i'm not here on tuesday i have a male woodpecker in my garden says roma roma come on guys where are the donations cough it up says sungo yes i think today i have had no donations today on the super chat not one not a single one <laughs> and i've been here for two hours giving my time for free <laughs> it's not blame duck it is lame duck let me just show you again let me just show you the first one so it's lame duck the word lame means unable to walk so if you are lame it means you are unable to walk you have difficulty walking or moving around so it is lame duck happy birthday to your mother thank you lucy it is now five past four i have given you five extra minutes five extra minutes i'm doing overtime now happy birthday to your mum please convey my kind regards thank you bimal it doesn't look as if i'm going to get any donations today no donations today on the live chat that's a shame how will i eat tonight it's not fair <laughs> don't worry calm down bye bye mr duncan see you next time thanks for the lovely live stream thank you antidon i hope you enjoyed the woodpecker the little baby woodpecker a very unusual thing to see very rare in fact i am jeffrey mr duncan and i come from indonesia i am so happy to learn english with your channel thank you jeffrey and you are very welcome i am about to go but i will be back here next friday next friday 2 p.m uk time every friday 2 p.m 
uk time you can catch me here on youtube mr duncan <laughs> thanks a lot for your wonderful live stream a big bravo to you thank you very much eva thank you eva eva has just made a donation thank you very much is anyone else going to anyone else going to leave a donation in the next 20 seconds here's here's the deal okay if if i stay here until quarter past four i will have to get one more donation come on just one more anybody want to make a donation if not i will go <laughs> it's a bit like blackmail really isn't it no more donations okay thank you eva for your donation i will go then no more donations i will go i was going to stay until quarter past but sadly no more donations that's a shame happy birthday to your mother thank you philippe thank you razan thank you for the interesting lesson and welcome jolie hello jolie jolie my eight-year-old daughter she liked it so much thank you razan and also jolie as well see you again soon this is mr duncan in the birthplace of the english language saying i'm going now because i didn't get another donation unfortunately goodbye mr duncan thanks for a super duper lesson no problem happy holidays and enjoy your weekend yes thank you eva and thank you for your donation bye bye lucy bye bye everybody this is mr duncan in england saying thanks for watching me for the past hour and eight minutes and of course you know what's coming next ta-ta for now see you next friday <laughs>